Hello everybody! Today I'm going to talk about the three most recent books in the Vlad Taltos series by Stephen Brust. I promised I would talk about these soon and I decided to do them in a batch because they are the latest books in a very long-running fantasy series and talking about the later books in series can be challenging. You can't give away too many details and not a lot of it will make sense if you don't know a lot of the history that comes before. But I'm going to make a stab at talking about these books. I had um, very different reactions to them so that should help somewhat. If you are new to this series, it is fantasy, more traditional type fantasy, and the series started in the 1980s. It's about a human man named Vlad Taltos who lives in the Dragaran Empire. Dragarans are essentially elves. They are very tall, they live for millennia, and I think they also have pointed ears. And there is quite a bit of racial tension between Dragarans and humans like Vlad. So Vlad is an unusual human in the Dragaran Empire because he actually lives amongst Dragarans rather than in human areas of the world. He's also a member of one of the Dragaran houses. There are 17 houses that are named after animals and each house has a quality or characteristic associated with it and with the members of that house. So the titles of all of the books are one of those an animals, which is one of those houses. And in every book, Vlad does something to kind of embody or act like he is a member of one of those houses and displaying those characteristics, which is pretty cool. I'm not going to like go into the details of all of that, but it's always something fun to look out for and see how he's doing that and often doesn't realize it. So Vlad starts out as a member of the House Jereg, which is the house of corruption and greed, basically. They're the assassins. Technically, assassination is illegal, but it happens anyway. And Vlad starts out kind of like a, a organized crime boss. He runs an area, like a territory in the capital city, and he runs the brothels and the gaming, and he does assassinations and such. At a certain point, he runs afoul of the Jereg's rules. He breaks one of the cardinal rules, and he leaves the Jereg, and he's on the run because they want to capture and kill him. Him. So there's a period of about eight years in the story where he is away from that initial setting where he was an assassin. But it's important to know that because of one of the plots of these later books. So let's start off with Tiasa, the 13th book. This is one of the books that kind of breaks the structure and formula for the Vlad Taltos novels because it's a little bit less focused on Vlad. And if I remember correctly, it's one of the rare books that actually has passages or entire chapters that are not from Vlad's perspective. Usually it's just Vlad telling the story. But this one introduces some interesting characters and ideas. So there are gods in this world, and this young girl named Devera is the granddaughter of a goddess and the daughter of a very famous Dragaran woman that Vlad is kind of frenemies with. <laughs> and she seems to have the ability to move through time or to like trick time. And she takes a silver Tiasa statue that the gods made and is playing with it. She puts it in Vlad's hands and he uses it as a prop in a con. Then at a different time in his life, the silver Tiasa reappears and it is used in a plot concerning the Genoine, who are like the Dragaran's enemies, possibly from a different world who might be invading. And then it might also be used in a plot to ensnare and trap Vlad by the Jereg, who are still trying to kill him. So the structure of this book is more about what Devera is doing behind the scenes at different periods in Vlad's life and the journey of the Silver Tiasa statue. I like the introduction of Devera. This is the first book that she appears in, and it's kind of a way to seed her in Vlad's life over about like a 10 year period, even though she hasn't actually been mentioned in previous books, if I remember correctly. Unfortunately, I don't remember the plot of this book so well, probably because there are like three different things going on. I mostly remember it because of Devera and the Silver Tiasa. 
and that's pretty much it. <laughs> it also mentions the Genoine again, which I think are a really interesting idea and one of the things I most want answers about. Then we come to Hawk. Hawk is the 14th book and the most recent book in the internal chronology of the series. And in this one, which is I think one of the best in the series, Vlad finally becomes so fed up with being on the run from the Jereg for so long that he comes up finally with a plan that will get the Jereg to call off their vendetta against him and he won't have this bounty on his head anymore. Basically, he wants his life back. He wants to go back to the city and live his life again. He wants to see his ex-wife and his son without putting them in danger. So it's basically all or nothing. He will either carry off this crazy plan and get his life back or he might die and he is actually at this point okay with that risk. The thing that I loved about this book is that it is pretty much the payoff of a bunch of things that the books previous to it have been building up to. All of the anger and frustration that Vlad has finally comes out and he finally decides to do something once and for all to fix his situation. And it's also one of those like getting the band back together stories because so many people that have been introduced in the series reappear, people that he worked with in the city before, some of his former employees and stuff, come back to help him. So it's very complicated and he's running around to get all these various props that he may or may not need for um, his plot. And that's the thing about these books is that in every book there's usually some sort of scheme where Vlad figures out something complicated and he doesn't explain how it actually worked until it's over and then he goes back to, to fill in the pieces for you. A lot of times this works, sometimes it doesn't for me, but in Hawk I think it all just worked so great. And then there's Velista, the 15th book, and I have some mixed feelings about this one. It doesn't continue on right after Hawk, which is kind of a disappointment because Hawk was so great and that story had such good inertia. I was so ready for the next thing. And instead, Velista backtracks in time to before Hawk and explains how Vlad knew about this strange building that he used as the setting of his plot in Hawk. Devera reappears at this point and she takes Vlad to this building, gets him inside, and tells him he needs to rescue her past self who has become trapped there. And Vlad is also trapped there, he can't get out again. The house or building is really strange because it didn't used to be there. It's appeared out of nowhere. It's definitely there now, but nobody knows where it came from. And the rooms of the building are in different times and places. So Vlad has to figure out the nature of the building, how and why it was constructed, and understand it so that he can get out of it and rescue Devera and possibly other people. There are actually a lot of answers about the world in general, explanations about why the Dragaran Empire is the way it is, which are questions that I've had for a long time, and I really liked knowing more of those things. It's what I was really looking forward to. I think the problem of this book is that not a lot happens action-wise. The middle of the book was kind of boring and saggy because for the most part all Vlad is doing is walking around a building from room to room being really confused and not talking about what he's figuring out. Because he's doing that typical thing where he figures everything out and then only tells you what he realized at the end of the book. And in this case that was really frustrating because there was not any other action taking place to distract, I guess, from Vlad withholding information. Nevertheless, I enjoyed the book a lot because it was funny. The humor in this one just worked so well. I don't always get all the jokes, but I got a lot of them in this and some of the puns and references to other works and stuff. For example, all of the chapter titles are puns on the titles of famous gothic romances which is just perfect. <laughs> now I am all caught up on this series. I do think there are going to be four more books because I've heard it's projected to be 19, which is interesting because there are only 17 houses of the Dragaran Empire and makes me wonder what the other two books will be called and what they'll be about. 
while I'm waiting for the remaining books to come out, I will probably go off and read the second series set in this world. I don't remember what the series is called, but I think they're about Kavren, who's another human living in the Empire, and I think he appears and meets Vlad for the first time in Tiasa. so I've seen a sneak peek of him. So I'm going to try to get my hands on those books, some of which I think are older from like the 80s and 90s, and that will tide me over until the next Vlad adventure. And also, now that I have caught up with the series, I thought I would just give some general thoughts about it. One of the main draws of the series for me is just Vlad <laughs> as a character, um, as a viewpoint. He is entertaining, and I, I like him as a person, even though he's like an ex-assassin. It has questionable morals sometimes. I still really enjoy him. And I like the other characters in the series as well. Some of them might be more like fantasy archetypes, a little, a little stereotypical in some ways, but they never fail to be interesting, especially when seen through Vlad's eyes and how he interprets and judges them and sees them as Dragarens when he's a human. But this is more traditional feeling fantasy. Um, you have your heroes and heroines with magical swords, goddesses meddling in people's lives, quests, magical objects, sorcery, and witchcraft. And it might even be the closest thing to sword and sorcery fantasy that I've read and really enjoyed. And since I don't really get along with traditional fantasy as much as I did when I was younger, you may be wondering, why do I still really like the series? And there are, besides the characters that I really enjoy, three things about this that I'd like you to know. The first is that the books are light, not just in terms of the stories, like they're not dark, this is like the opposite of grimdark, but like the books themselves all hover around the 300 page mark. They are slim stories, fast paced, and I really appreciate that after 30 years and 15 of the books so far, the word count hasn't ballooned. <laughs> they really tr stayed true to form to the earliest books, and I like a series that can maintain consistency like that. So the books are light. I can read one of them in a day, and they're these palette cleansers in between heavier or longer books. The second thing is that they're funny. This is like humorous fantasy, which can be harder to find. There's a lot of levity, jokes, a lot of in-jokes, long-running gags, um, puns, and, and failed jokes too, because Loyosh doesn't always appreciate Vlad's sense of humor when they're in danger. And I like that. It's, you know, I'm, I'm guaranteed to laugh out loud at least once while reading one of the books. The third thing is that there are a lot of women. <laughs> it's like 50-50 with male and female characters. Doesn't matter if they're primary, secondary, or background. Doesn't matter what profession they are either. Half of them seem to be women and half of them seem to be men. And I appreciate this so much because it just seems ordinary and almost all of those women are not romantic interests. They're really on par in every category with men fully fledged on their own. Thank you. So if you enjoy fantasy and the more traditional classic forms of fantasy, but you're a little bit irritated by the lack of women or women being used in very cliche ways, check out this series. It's very different. And I think that's everything I have to say about the series in general and about these three most recent books. If you have been reading the series in any particular order, or if you think you're going to start reading them, please leave me a comment down below because I would love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.